Rabbi David Stern, President of the Central Conference of American Rabbis and Senior Rabbi of Temple Emmanuel in Dallas. I grew up in a rabbinic family. And it was our custom when a scholar in residence would visit Temple for the weekend that my parents would host that visiting scholar for Shabbat dinner before services on Friday night. One unforgettable Shabbat, we were gathered around the dining room table, including the eminent visiting guest, for blessings. And my father called upon my younger sister, Elsie, about five years old at the time, to recite the motzi, which she did flawlessly. And that's when my father, swelling with pride and pushing his luck, <laughs> asked my sister, and when do we say the motzi? To which she dutifully replied, when we have guests. She actually said, when we have company. Why is this biennial so powerful? Because we have company. We are surrounded by thousands of Reformed Jews from across North America and around the world. Some of us are here in the company of memory, following the example of parents or mentors who showed us a living and vibrant example of this sacred work. We stand on mighty shoulders of the rabbis who taught us, the lay leaders who inspired us, the beacons for justice who lit our way. We have company. But company means something more tonight. It means every face you saw in that video, each personal testimonial we heard, every story you know of a kid who learned to live and love Judaism in one of our camps or programs, every nifty kid at this convention. Because those kids issue a reminder and a challenge to every grown-up here. You may think you're an empty nester, but you've got company. You may think you have aged out of responsibility for creating a vibrant youth community in your congregation, but you've got company. You may work on the finance committee or the building committee so you think that youth is somebody else's department. Well, guess what? Look at the screens and hear the stories. You've got company too. Because our children are not our future. They are our present. And the more we treat them not as hot houses to be experimented with to achieve some demographic end, but as living, breathing, living, thinking, laughing members of our communities, the better off they and we will be. The more we ask them what they think about worship or Jewish learning, the more we put them on search committees and task forces, the more we invite them to be synagogue social justice interns for the summer or song leaders for the younger kids, they will help us to be better at what we do. And the more every single one of us accepts the responsibility to be company to them, to walk with them, to listen to them, to allow them their joy and allow them their pain, to teach them and love them and then love them some more, I believe the valued metrics will take care of themselves. So here's another story from my childhood about how my synagogue shaped my Jewish soul. But it's not about youth group and it's not about camp. It's about a synagogue president. Because when I was 13, the president of Westchester Reform Temple was an amazing man <laughs> named Alfred Ronald, the Holocaust survivor who fought in the French resistance. For my bar mitzvah, Mr. Ronald gave me an envelope. 
And in that envelope were, 13, were 12 post-dated checks dated to the first of the month of each of the coming 12 months. Each check was made out for $10 and signed by Mr. Ronald. But the pay to the order of line was left blank. In the same envelope were my handwritten instructions. I was to choose a different Sadaka recipient each month, fill out the check, and mail it. Mr. Ronald forbade me to write him a thank you note. Instead, he asked that I send him a monthly report of the charity I had selected and why. I was 13 years old. I had never filled out a check in my life. And because of Al Ronald, the first checks I ever wrote were for blessing. I still have the muscle memory of sitting in my mid-1970s suburban New York blue and green checked carpet bedroom with the smoke blue side chandelier <laughs> and writing those checks each month. Part of the reason I am a rabbi today is because Al Ronald looked at me and decided he had company. Our kids need to know. Our kids need to know they are in our lives and they need to know we are in theirs. Because we can all recite the litany of conditions they face. They are overextended, overprogrammed with stress and anxiety as common companions. All the concerns we had as kids about our appearance, our friends, what people did or didn't think of us, are magnified by social media, by the screens which we sometimes worry have kidnapped their souls altogether. And that is the glorious chutzpah of this movement and this night. Because in an age where kids are at risk for isolation, our reform movement has the spiritual creativity and courage to invite them into authentic connection. In an age where kids feel like they have no time, we're going to show them how enriching their time can be. In a generation where our Jewish kids somehow think that their achievements in the classroom or on the playing field exist independent of their Jewish identity, we're going to give them something called six points. And in a consumerist culture, which too often manipulates them and renders them passive, we're going to give them something called litaken, and the agency to make a difference for justice in the world. And every time they feel alone, we are going to say, you have company. And maybe we'll mean us. And maybe we'll mean something far greater than we. Maybe even a whisper of holiness. When the sun sets on a Friday night over an outdoor chapel, or a teacher listens, or a friend shows up at the door for a shiva minion, because that's what they've learned Jewish friends do. So here's another story. This one is from this past Sunday at Temple Emmanuel in Dallas. Our youth learning program was getting out at noon, and as I stood in the gathering space, I noticed a mom with kids in tow, the seven-year-old brother and the five-year-old brother fussing at each other. And just as the older brother was about to escalate the situation, he stopped in his tracks, because, com because coming the other way was his madricha, a high school senior who serves as the teaching assistant in his class. Hey, Jack, how'd you like our activity today? Jack's scowl turned to a completely odd smile. It was fun. Because at the moment that young Jack was going to do something not particularly loving to his little brother, he realized he had company. And his company was a cool teenager who knew who he was and cared what he thought about throwing rubber balls into a barrel with some Jewish connection that I can no longer recall. <laughs> I stand here tonight not just as the child of Jack and Priscilla Stern or the student of Alfred Ronald 
or the proud parent of that high school senior I just mentioned. <laughs> I am honored to speak with you as the president of the Central Conference of American Rabbis and to tell you that our community of rabbis stands with you in standing with our kids. Our rabbis at camp, our rabbis in Hillel, our rabbis who teach on college campuses or inspire teens from the pulpit or lead them to life-changing experiences in Israel, our rabbis who teach confirmation and get good and silly at Tat Shabbat, we are with you and we are with our kids every step of the way. None of us can do it alone, not our kids, not our professionals, not our families. We need each other. One more word about adult responsibility toward our kids. It begins with responsibility for our own Jewish lives. The great wisdom of the Federal Aviation Administration is that you put the oxygen mask on yourself first, and Jewish oxygen is no different. We will create the path to nurtured Jewish children by nurturing Jewish adults. As communities, we need to create meaningful Jewish learning for adults, inspire adults in prayer, challenge adults to justice, so they can model learning and prayer and acts of justice for our children. There are no perfect recipes. But too often when we talk about kids as our future, our passing of the Torah becomes a game of hot potato where we can't wait to get it into the next set of hands. Our challenge as adults might be to spend at least as much time focused on embracing the Torah as we do on passing it. As rabbis, we are your partners in that sacred work. So thank you to the teens who make us better, to the adults who learn and grow with them, in this week's Torah portion, the brothers of 17-year-old Joseph throw him into a pit. They commit the grave sin of making a teenager invisible. That can't be our way. Thank you for seeing our kids, not just on the screens and on the stage and in the halls of the biennial, but at your own kitchen tables, in your own temple boardrooms, and in your own vision for what a community can be. Thank God they are in our lives, and thank God we are in theirs. Shout it from the rooftops. We have company. And as any five-year-old at Shabbat dinner can tell you, when we have company, great blessing is sure to come.